So I found that pencil sharpeners are a lot like sports cars, where the more you spend, the more finicky what you're getting is. Uh, you know, you, the performance can be more or higher than what you get from kind of a standard item, but the the sharpener itself, again, is quite finicky and sensitive to change, and there's a lot of circumstances under which a brand new, very expensive sharpener, you know, not very, you know, $20, $30, so relatively speaking here, but a, a brand new sharpener won't work as well as a very affordable sharpener. So you might have a 2 or $3 sharpener that works great, and then a $20 or $25 sharpener like these, uh, they just won't work. And you know they can sharpen pencils. The reviews online are great. You see videos of them working, but yours isn't working. What will happen is that over time, these screws can loosen. The blade doesn't feel loose. It doesn't look loose. But what will happen is that material from the pencil can get wedged in between the blade and the body. And you'll put in a fresh pencil and it just won't sharpen. It's It'll feel like the hole here is too wide. And just, you'll turn it and nothing will come off. It'll be like this. You'll push harder and still, you'll twist the pencil, nothing will happen. And what happens is that, again, that blade has gone out of adjustment. You know, is it possible that you received a, just a bad sharpener, just a, a defect? Yeah, sure. But again, these, this is a very simple thing. Companies like, uh, like Coombe and Dukes that makes this model, uh, you know, they make a lot of these. I, I don't think they're putting too many out of the factory that aren't working at all. So what happens is that your yours is out of alignment and it's very easy to fix. Get a screwdriver down. This is just kind of a standard screwdriver that you might, you know, tweak electronics with. And you're going to use a little sharp, uh, not, not sharp, but like a uh, kind of an angled Phillips head or something with that little cross shape there. It doesn't really matter so much if it's a, a Phillips or kind of one of the variants, but you need something like this and you're going to hold this steady and give this a twist. And you're going to want to remove this entirely. And what you want to do is now inspect this for any material that has gotten in here. You can see there's some shavings starting here, uh, but this one's not that bad. I've, uh, I did a good job tightening this last time and now it's been relatively clean and make sure there's uh, just nothing in there. No, no little dust, no pencil shavings, nothing like that. Uh, you could look now for any sort of variations in here and make sure there's no uh, defects, no roughness, uh, no raises in the metal. And this one looks fine. So you don't have to worry about that. You could make the sharpness a little bit. You could change the angle of the sharpener by tweaking this surface here. But now we're getting into pretty advanced territory and uh, a lot of work. Now we're going to get the underside of the blade. You can see it's a little dirty and you want to brush this off. Obviously, this is a blade. You want to be really careful with this. It's quite sharp. Usually you should be doing gloves uh, and, you know, being really exercising all the caution you can. Now that, that bottom is clean, you're going to want to hold the blade steady and don't hold the blade too long. Really what you want to do is just get it so that this screw is threaded. And then now make this nice and tight. You don't want that to loosen up over time. Don't go crazy, especially if you have a larger or full size screwdriver. You can't really over tighten it with a little electronics screwdriver like this. But if you have something larger, you want to be careful not to tweak this. This is like a lightweight piece of, uh, I guess, magnesium. And then you definitely want to be careful with this, which is uh, brass. Now we have a nice flush surface and you can see we're getting a really nice sharpen. And we know that because uh, we could look at these shavings. And again, the shaving quality and the shaving length will vary based on your pencil, but we have a nice long shaving there and we can essentially see kind of some holes in it. You know, it's not see-through, it is wood. It's not, you know, made of something that's going to get see-through, like, like I don't know, dough. But uh, you could see basically holes in it. That's a, that's a pretty good sign. Not every pencil is made out of the same type of wood. It's not all made out of the same material. Some woods are different. Some pencils have, you know, uh, you know, whatever it is. So it's not always going to have the same 
type of shaving, but to get a consistent shaving like this, where you don't have to apply a lot of pressure, then that's a really good indicator that your blade is mounted properly and that it's uh, as sharp as it should be. You know, a sharpener like this one will have spare blades here and you could use those. You could sharpen this blade, obviously that's gonna be a little challenging, but it's very doable. But to see uh, this sort of shaving is a, is a very good sign. Now we see uh, the, again, now we're getting into stuff that's specific to the sharpener, but we'll, now we'll move that lead here. And now with number two, we'll just sharpen the lead. And you could sharpen that to whatever you desire. If you have a two blade sharpener, then you could repeat the process and remove the second blade, the number two blade. Uh, but this one looks pretty dialed in. And here we have a nice extended point. You can make it as sharp as you want. You just have to keep sharpening and apply more or less pressure to that. The uh, thing is that everything is the same with this Duke sharpener. You want to remove this, make sure nothing is under there, make sure there's no wobble to this blade, and then uh, you know put it back and then make sure there's no wobble to the blade. You want this to be nice and tight, and that's something you'll want to check every couple of weeks as you're using this. And you know, more or less depending on the type of pencils you're using. Uh, and then as you see a degradation in performance, remove the blade, clean it off, add it, uh, you know, put it back in nice and tight, and you should be good to go. Anyway, if you have a high-end pencil sharpener or any pencil sharpener, but particularly a high-end one, and it's not sharpening as well as it should, uh, that should be the process and it should get you all ready to go and putting out some really nice points like, like this one we just made uh, or any of these which were made with these two sharpeners. Thanks for watching.